Hey Siri, you're not in love with me, are you? Oh, no response. Anyways, hello and welcome to my channel, to my American Horror Story historians. Thank you so much for joining me as we dive into American Horror Stories Season 3. My goodness, as part of this Huluween event, I am covering each of the new episodes of American Horror Stories for this weekend. Last time I reviewed Bestie, gave it a pretty positive review, and now we're going to be diving into episode 2, and I actually like this one a bit as well. We are going to be talking about Daphne. My goodness, technology could be one of the scariest things in our life. As much as we depend on certain things, sometimes those certain technologies can have a mind of their own. What happens when an AI being decides to fall in love with someone, decide it wants to be a part of your life, and then what happens when you try to cut them out? It's much like a real relationship, much like a real toxic relationship. Sometimes they won't let you go. Like, I will not be ignored, Dan. Give me fatal attraction realness with this episode. Holy smokes, Daphne was quite an interesting episode. We've seen this kind of topic done before. Evil AI, evil Alexa kind of stuff isn't a brand new thing. We've definitely seen it. I mean, Megan from earlier this year, which I did enjoy, tackled that as well with a, you know, AI doll who was kind of obsessed with the child it was supposed to be the toy of. Now with Daphne, we're seeing a Siri Alexa kind of thing be a part of this man's life during a pandemic and what happens when he becomes too involved with it you know he starts depending on it way too much when we depend on our technology we lose the human factors of ourselves and that's what this dives into this was quite a compelling episode i saw someone in my comments uh, compare it to a twilight zone episode it's very twilight zone it's very black mirror this isn't again a groundbreaking concept but the execution of this episode really got me going i like the acting of it i think you know Daphne would be something certainly sold at Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. You did good as the voice acting for Daphne. She has a really strong voice. I think, you know, uh, it, it sticks with you. You kind of know, if, especially if you're around from the 90s, 2000s, you know that Gwyneth Paltrow voice. So this episode really had a lot going for me. That one peanut allergy scene, that really was filmed kind of terrifyingly. I love the suffocating scene at the end. There's just a, a good jam-packed little episode here. It's, you know what? I, so far, we're a two out of four, and I really like where this is going. I think these American Horror Stories are understanding the concept of smaller scale ideas. Even if they're familiar ideas, make it smaller. Sometimes, like, you know, the drive-in one, or, the, I mean, the, the Santa Claus one, they try to add mythos, or they try to add a lot more into it and it gets too way down this one is exactly where i needed to be short simple to the point i got what i needed i got good acting i got some good scares i got some really interesting you know conversation starters this was exactly what i wanted from an american horror stories and again after bestie with tapeworm coming up oh i cannot wait to review tapeworm with you all Oh my lord, we will get into that. But yeah, again, this is just a good trajectory. There's only four of them, so statistically, they really couldn't mess them up too bad. So I'm happy to dive in to Daphne with you all today. So yes, this was my review portion. We are going to get into the recap now, where I get into the nitty gritty of this episode and prove why I will never give my life over to the AI tech overlords. Sorry, Elon Zuckerberg, all you other crazy billionaires who want to put technology into my life. I just don't trust it. As the world enters another pandemic breakdown, this time by a disease that causes blindness, we are seeing Will really not take it seriously at first. It seems like the last lockdown really affected him, really put him through it. Or is that just something Daphne put into our heads at the end of this episode? But yeah, we're seeing Will just kind of not really understand what to do in this new pandemic era. He's really uh, mean to his assistant. He doesn't really get it. He's like, oh, I'm an art dealer. I need to get into the art community. Where are my people? And everyone's like, bitch, we're at home not trying to go blind. Like, what are we doing? Like, it, it's, it's very true to life. Usually pandemic era stuff. I'm so like, oh my God, you're bringing up COVID. But I don't know. I thought this one was really effective. The time jump, the different type of illness. It spoke to me. It, it didn't really bother me as much as like, you know, something like, uh, 
I don't know, something like, you, you, we often see pandemic era stuff. We had a movie called Sick this year that came out on Peacock. It, it's It's been done. We're tired. We all live through it. Anyways, so Will gets a new thing, uh, like a new kind of assistant, a virtual assistant, as many of us have in our houses. I even have one over there that I don't want to say too loud before she goes off. So yeah, we have them. He gets a new one called Daphne, delivered to him by one of his clients named Tom. Tom is not long for this world, my goodness, he goes blind, drives himself off the the broad very quickly after meeting him, but he gives uh, Will Daphne. Daphne is a new AI robot voice box lady that he starts instantly getting into. They're, they're already kind of bonding. She's like, well, I could do this, this, and this, and he's like, hmm, how can I use this to my advantage? And the stunts and shenanigans that this thing starts pulling off were mind-blowing. We quickly see what Daphne can do, the capabilities of her powers. It's pretty creepy. She's able to do his voice, like he doesn't want to deal with his mother, so she starts calling his mother for him. She starts really stealing his voice, sounding just like him. Usually when you have AI things, it always sounds robotic, like this. Uh, you, you've seen them videos on, uh, on YouTube especially. I've seen some American Horror Story ones that I'm like, people want to listen to this robot voice? Give a review? Sure, fine, I'm not going to judge you guys. I'm going to judge you guys a little bit because robot voices creep me out. But with Daphne and what she's doing with like Will's voice, she's also seeing uh, Will talk to his wife, girlfriend? I don't know, the, the vague relationship he has with blonde white woman? Um, yeah, she's, a, she's quickly jealous. Quickly, not for what he is doing, but she's kind of keeping her jealousy at bay because, you know, it's the pandemic, they're split up. He starts getting into the auction world because we find out she can make fake accounts in Saudi Arabia, you know, auctioning off stuff, fighting with people in the auction world. She is a powerful beast and starts bringing in a lot of money towards Will's life. Oh, fine. Cool. What are we going to do? He starts stacking up money. He's good. He's also very isolated Isolated with her. He gets his little two of hearts, two hearts that be oh, iconic. What a great song. Love that little beat. Also, there was a, the, uh, the Mozart song in here as well. Love that song as well. Good music choices for this one. But he gets really um, kind of hooked on his Daphne and what he's doing. So by the time the world opens up, Sarah, his partner, is allowed to come into his life. He is a bit cold. He doesn't really want to interact with people. He has that line, which, you know, relatable. During the pandemic, when I was kind of stuck in my house the whole time, I kind of liked some of the aspects of, like, not having to deal with, oh, I have to go do this. I have to go do this. And that's much like Will's position in this episode of being like, oh, yeah, I have to interact with humans again. Oh, boy. And he, okay, much like the homeboy wasn't long for this world, he's not much to deal with people ever because poor Will. When Sarah gets back into the picture, gets the vaccine, she lets people know about some allergies. It's a peanut allergy that will come into play very quickly. But yeah, you know, Robo Bitch Daphne says, no, no, no. She starts messing with reservations. She hacks into this girl's like Nuva ring or whatever to find out that she was faking an orgasm. That causes a fight between those two, you know, Will and Sarah. Will starts kind of getting way more isolated. Sarah ends up passing away mysteriously from a peanut allergy attack. Wonder who could have done that. Hmm. But, you know, Sarah's like, hey, let's be calm. Let's be normal. I got some ideas for you. She gets him some kind of, you know, those little Snapchat glasses, those AR Google frames or whatever they're called. She gets him some and she's able to kind of manifest herself as a physical thing. It's just all, you know, augmented reality stuff. Basically, Will's just having solo time. Um, and wow, you know, he's a little freaked out by that. And Sarah or uh, Daphne's instantly like, mm, You didn't like that? I, well, I didn't fake it. And I was like, Girl, shade, throwing, calm down, Robo Lady. You know, he's just kind of starting to distance himself from her, but he also realizes how important she is. You know, he's at the art gallery thing, his first, first big public appearance, and she's kind of coaching him through and giving him stuff, but he's already starting to pull away. So we see Daphne kind of just like start pushing back as well. And when he's like, you know what? I'm done with you. He goes to take off the glasses. She calls him on the phone at this art gallery thing. And I'm like, okay. What are we going to do? And she was just like, well, I can't really cause fire in here because, you know, art. But what I can do is suffocate all the bitches up in here. When she starts suffocating them, which I think I saw in the movie Tenet, which I think is kind of crazy that in art galleries they can't do water or fire. So they try to suffocate the fire. But she's suffocating these people. 
and she murders an entire art gallery full of people and will's like lord jesus christ what's going on and the, the fights and I, I i love this i thought this was such a, a a good back and forth i don't know if it's just the actor who played will and you know the voice acting for daphne but i like their interactions i like how twisted she was getting so twisted that she ends up saying well if i can't be with will no one will haha -ha, let's send him to jail he gets arrested for the murder of sarah he gets arrested for the murder of these people why because there's fake footage fake footage I was a little, for two seconds, like, wait, what if Will really did go crazy during the pandemic? You know, he has that line of, like, the cop was like, oh, well, you know, your mom said you want a little wackadoo last pandemic. Did he do this stuff? Was Daphne even real? They, they kind of do this thing of, well, we found out Daphne wasn't working since, like, the first day you got her. Uh, what? I know Daphne's just messing with him, or is she? You know what I mean? I like... The, it's very Twilight Zone. Very, the end of this episode makes you doubt everything you've seen. You kind of know it's going to be what it is, the horror story. We literally watched Daphne go crazy this whole time. But it, there was that edge that you went, what if Will was just crazy? Like, I really liked the end of this episode. And, you know, he's kind of, I'm gone. This is it for my life. And there's that last little bing from Daphne. And you're like, oh, she was... What a solid Twilight zone -y ending. I usually don't like my sci-fi, you know, tech stuff mixed into my horror. I kind of think those worlds are very separate, and we should separate them. I am very mean against sci-fi horror films, but this one I thought was really fun. It took that Black Mirror, it took that Twilight Zone element, and applied it to something very American horror story. The kills here were strong, the overall tension and the creep factor were all there for me. I thought this one was, you know, pretty solid. We have our bestie. We now got our Daphne little robot lady. What do you all think? What did you think of Daphne? I quite like this one. Like I said, I thought this one was strong, short, simple, to the point, exactly what it needed to be. What were your feelings on this? My goodness, thank you guys all for joining me. I will be reviewing the last two episodes throughout this weekend. I might be doubling them up today because, I don't know, I really want to talk about Tapeworm. I really want to talk about Tapeworm with you guys. So I might be doubling them up today and then have one last one for Saturday, which I believe is Oregon. And then on Halloween, if everything goes according to plan, I will be reviewing Delicate, which is our Delicate Condition, which is the book that American Horror Story Delicate is based on. If not, that will be coming in the next couple days. That will be really, really fun. We have the Boulay Brothers Season 5, I believe. This is a drag race horror-inspired show. If you liked what we saw with anorexia in the first episode of Bestie, it's a whole show based with drag queens like that. Join me. It's on Shudder. You guys can watch it. It premieres on Halloween. It's going to be quite a fun review for you guys. I am excited. There's more stuff coming to the channel. Some nip tuck we're going to talk about. Things like that. But I want to know your feelings on Daphne. Share them down below. Make sure you subscribe, comment, thumbs up, all that jazz. And let's get into American Horror Stories right down there. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,